Hi, I'm film composer Max Mueller, and this could be your production company's logo music. Thank you for being with me today. Now, let's get down to storytelling. Let's say you're making a movie about Corey, who lives in the suburbs. Ah, the suburbs. <laughs> As luck would have it, fairy tale like experiences cropped up that very evening. Samantha, who let's assume we've developed as a character in the exposition, was in her treehouse reading the collected articles of journalist Molly Ivins, when suddenly. <laughs> In their fastidiousness, the aliens left behind a ransom note at the base of the treehouse ladder. I guess they're able to render paper products on their planet. Corey finds the note, and it's an inciting incident. Here's some inciting incident music. This is why I'm not a screenwriter. And the eccentric one who has three lines in the movie and is pantomiming and prat falling the rest of the time. The leader explains to Cory that they need to get more fuel for the rocket ship, and the only one who can brew it for them is the Crimson Witch of the West 117th Street Cemetery. Also, I, I don't know what they want in return for Samantha. Let's say it's cookies. Maybe the town has the world's largest peanut butter chocolate chip M&M cookie and, and they want it. I, I, again, not, not a screenwriter. <laughs> They finally land safely on Zipzoink in one of the large bodies of water. Uh, they transform the rocket ship into a maritime ship and come onto the deck to look around. Suddenly, enemy pirates appear. This planet must have had its finger on the pulse of 19th century Western literature from Earth. <laughs> Corey and the squad are able to throw all the crew members overboard and corner Captain Short Mort Copper. Okay. He gives them a map to the alien palace, and when their backs are turned, he jumps and swims to shore to start a new life as a short order cook. <sighs> My 1940s radio narrator voice is getting tired. 
So here's some slower, prettier music. Uh, let's say that Corey is visited by his uh, fairy godfather and uh, uh, he makes him a magical offer he can't refuse uh, or uh, gives him advice about loving himself. Enjoy! And we're back. They finally arrive at the alien palace and inside the lead alien of the planet Zipzoink, uh, let's call her Zoinkzip, is holding a super embarrassing and dehumanizing circus of humans. Corey sees Samantha in the second ring. She has been relegated to the position of assistant lion tamer or whatever creature can be tamed on this planet. Anyway, here's some circusy and cartoony music. As Corey and the squad sneak backstage, oh, by the way, I know what you're thinking. Why didn't they just exchange the world's biggest cookie with the guards for Samantha? And it, Listen, I'm not a screenwriter. Don't hire me as a screenwriter. I, I'm much more professional as a composer. Corey and the squad sneak backstage, but Sam is nowhere to be found. I can't write another description for the final duel scene. Just assume Corey learns that he has a strength he didn't know about or an object does something he didn't know about and the squad can't help him. While that plays, let me tell you more about me. Thank you for hanging in there with me today, and I hope I've demonstrated every possible style of music you might need for your animated film or show, or your live action family adventure film or sh- oh shoot, holiday music. <laughs>